You know, if your physicians start prescribing snake oil, then why do you think the wound of the people is not curable? If the prophets are just telling people whatever they want to hear, then of course the nation is going to go morally bankrupt. And in our day, if America's preachers do not preach the word, if they back down when the truth is out of season, if they fail to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, then it is inevitable that the time will come when the people will not endure sound doctrine. Last January, a pastor by the name of Justin Hoke of Trinity Bible Presbyterian Church out in California, he put a message out on his church sign saying, Bruce Jenner is still a man. Homosexuality is still a sin. The culture may change. The Bible does not. Sounds to me like a pretty good message to put out in a church sign in California. They need it. Protesters appeared. Covered by the local newspaper, the sign was vandalized, and all but one couple in the church said that either the pastor had to leave or they were going to. So he resigned within a week. Does it sound to you like the time came in California when they would no longer endure sound doctrine? Yeah, yeah. But after their own lust will heap to themselves, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Two years ago, Pastor Kentina Washington Leaphart, who earned her Master of Divinity degree through a United Methodist Seminary, she organized a pro-abortion prayer event to bless the staff and patients at a Fort Worth abortion clinic and to support abortion as a woman's God-given right. So what do you think? Do those people sound like they're following after the Lord or after their lusts? But after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, turn away their ears from the truth shall be turned to fables. Jeremiah told the people their bruise was incurable and their wound was grievous because their prophets had seen vain and foolish things. And he goes on to say, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. You know, if your physician cannot diagnose your problem, then is it no wonder that he cannot cure your ailment? Their prophets would not discover, they would not reveal the people's iniquity to them so that the people could repent and so that God could turn away from their captivity. And he says to turn away their captivity, implying that if they had told the people about their sins, the people would have repented and their iniquity could have, their captivity could have been averted. But isn't it good that even in wrath, God remembers mercy? <clears throat> Starting in Jeremiah 29.10, God does tell the nation that even though they've gone into captivity after 70 years, they will seek him and they will find him when they search for him with all their heart. And in verses 14 and 15, he says, I will be found of you. I will turn away your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and all the places whither I have driven you. I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried captive. And now listen to verse 15. Because ye have said, the Lord hath raised us up, prophets in Babylon. They were finally willing to listen to the Lord's prophet. It took Babylon, it took 70 years in Babylon to get them to do it. But hey, if that was what it took, praise God for it. It took them two generations, but they were finally willing to listen to the prophets in Babylon. And therefore, God says, okay, now you're going to seek me. Now you're going to turn to me, and I'm going to turn your captivity. I'm going to return you to your land. But these false prophets, they had, they have, he says, but have, they have seen for the false burdens. In Jeremiah 14, 13, Jeremiah told God that the prophets say unto them, ye shall not see the sword. Neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Well, I guess we all know how that turned out, right? Exactly as God in the verses that follow told Jeremiah it would turn out. And not only false burdens, but also false causes of banishment. Their prophets explained all their troubles away. No, no, this isn't a judgment of God that you see going on around you. These are just natural geopolitical events that are happening. You're not being banished from the land because of anything that you're doing wrong. You don't have anything to repent of. Don't listen to that crazy prophet Jeremiah. 
And there are people in our day who deny that the judgment of God is the judgment of God upon them for their sins. If your physician can't even recognize the most obvious symptoms, then why do you think the captivity is not being turned away? And that's what the Bible calls physicians of no value. And they're physicians of no value because they're not a part of the solution. They're a part of the problem. They're a part of the cause, not a part of the cure. And that's why Jeremiah 23, 28 says, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat? Don't go passing your dream off as a message from God when it's really just a message from your anchovy pizza last night. Tell your dream is nothing more than a dream. And tell the real word of God as a faithful messenger. What is the chaff, the hus, the worthless refuse to the wheat, the meat to the matter? There really is no comparison between the burdens of the false prophets and the healing word of the Lord. You know, the tragedy for ancient Jerusalem was that they didn't see this until it was too late for them. God told Jeremiah in chapter 23, 33, when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask you saying, what is the burden of the Lord? When they finally come to you and they ask you, what is the burden of the Lord? Ye shall say to them, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. That's the burden now. They waited too late to see it. And my prayer for America is that God will wake us up and shake us up before it's too late. May we stop putting people into positions of power whose potions are poison and not preventions. I've said before that I do believe that this insanity that we see escalating all around us will implode. I believe that all the shrill antics and the rising violence that we're seeing are just displays of desperation like the wailing of a dying animal. I believe it will come crashing down in an epic destruction like the Tower of Sauron. And when it comes flaming down, it will take with it everything in its power. My only concern is, will we be able to keep this nation out from under its power until after that happens? If so, then we can watch with relief as the lunatics crash and burn and thank God that they didn't take us all down with them. But if they ever do regain power, then may God help America.